Welcome to the first section of Unit 3, Treatments to Support Soft Tissue Repair. Your goal as a sports massage therapist is to achieve the best outcome for your client. Sometimes this is referring them to a different discipline, which you have already covered. Other times it is treating them. If you're going to treat, you need to know what you can do and when. To know this, you first need to understand the injury repair process, which you've already covered in level three, but we will briefly recap it here. You then need to understand what would be considered appropriate treatment. By creating your client a well thought out treatment plan, you will be able to help in the recovery of their injury back to a functional state. Let's start by looking at the injury repair process. There are three stages of soft tissue repair, the acute stage, the subacute and the chronic stage. The acute stage is the initial injury through to days three to seven. The number of days depends on the severity of the injury. This is your inflammatory phase. Inflammation is key to starting the healing process. It's a bit like your first aider turning up. The inflammatory phase is the body's way of trying to protect itself. It starts by causing vasodilation to stem the loss of blood. Due to the lack of blood bringing oxygen to the area, cell death will occur. That causes the release of histamines. Histamines cause vasodilation and increase permeability, which allows fluid from the blood into the area, which allows the body to plug up the injury site temporarily and allow time for the body to create a permanent fix. The subacute stage runs from days three to seven through to three to six weeks. Again, the more severe the injury, the longer the time frame. New blood vessels need to be formed to allow oxygen and nutrients to the area, while lymphatic vessels provide drainage. Fibroblasts begin to lay down collagen and the collagen will draw the wound together, creating your permanent fix. This is known as your repair phase. The final stage is the chronic stage, also known as the remodeling phase. This is anywhere from three to six weeks up to two years. So you can see that it does take a long time for an injury to repair fully. Although the closer you get to the two year mark, the, the changes are very minimal at this point. The majority of collagen has been laid down by the start of this phase and the body continues to lay down and remodel the collagen. So that's a recap of your injury repair process. There are some key elements you're trying to achieve from your overall treatment plan. These are limit the chance of further injury, facilitate the client's return to pre-injury form and prevent secondary injury and dysfunction. This is the very bones of your treatment plan and should be considered at every stage. As we're looking at doing the best for our clients, understanding some basic factors that affect the healing process is important. These have been covered in level three, but just a reminder, age, nutrition, medication, rest and activity alongside treatment can both be positive or negative um, on the healing process. Some of these we can clearly control, others we can't do so much about. But general discussions with your client about these factors at an appropriate time can be useful for them as they may not be aware of them. Remember, as you are not medically qualified, you cannot give advice on medication prescribed or not. However, you can point out that they can possibly affect the healing process. So let's talk about treatment at the different phases of injury. Firstly, the acute phase. You may not see your client at this stage. This is up to seven days post-injury. If, however, you do, your treatment plan is very simple. You start by following a first aid protocol. Here you need to ascertain the severity of the injury. Are they okay to continue or do they need to go to A&E? And anywhere in between those two extremes. Things like level of consciousness and whether they have sustained a head injury here are key. If they turn up for treatment two or three days later, you still need to assess the situation. But hopefully if they needed medical help, they would have sorted it out and not come to see you. But do check. Consider things like concussion at this point as well. If you deem it safe to treat without medical intervention, whether this is at the scene of an incident or a couple of days later, your goals will be to reduce risk of further injury, do you stop them from continuing their activity? 
reduce swelling, which in turn will help reduce potential pain, allow freer movement and allow the healing process to take place, reduce the risk of further bleeding. Every time the injury is opened up, it will slow the healing process. Reduce the risk of secondary cell death and possibly the most important to your client at the time, reduce pain. That's the aim of your treatment, so what might that look like? You may or may not have heard of the acronym PRICE. Depending on where you are in the acute phase will determine where you might start in the PRICE protocol. PRICE stands for Protect, Rest, Ice, Compression and Elevation. So that is basically your treatment plan for the acute stage of an injury. Massage treatment over the injured area should be avoided at this stage. It will not be of benefit to the client, potentially causing further damage to the tissues and being painful to the client. Heat should also be avoided as this will cause vasodilation. Moving on to the subacute stage, This stage is the most critical for correct rehab as collagen is just starting to lay down and with the right encouragement can create optimal scar tissue. If the injury does not get to the tensile stresses from movement in the right direction, the collagen may lay down in a haphazard fashion, meaning they do not align with the original fibres in the area, making the scar tissue less functional. Therefore, resting the area should not be overdone. There is also a potential for muscle atrophy during this stage, making the area weaker and potentially causing loss of mobility. What are your treatment goals at this stage? You are looking to develop mobility, continue to minimise swelling, pain and the risk of further bleeding. You will want to increase blood flow to the area and minimise excessive scar tissue. All these are interlinked. For example, reducing swelling will increase mobility and reduce pain. What are your treatment options here? General massage, so effleurage and petrissage can help improve circulation and help relieve pain. Soft tissue mobilisation to help prevent and reduce adhesions. Realign collagen and minimise scar tissue. Neuromuscular techniques minimise the build-up of neural inhibitors that can restrict muscle function. Heat or ice can be used. However, think about its impact on the circulatory system and choose appropriately. Mobility exercises can help improve range of movement, while gentle stretches encourage intermuscular circulation and muscle energy techniques aiming to return muscles to the pre-injury length. It is important here that you work within your client's limitations at this stage. Build into your treatment plan and don't throw everything at it at once. For example, you may start with passive stretching, moving on to active stretches. You may need to start with general massage before employing more advanced techniques. You also need to consider what time your client has available. They may not have time to do half a dozen exercises and it's far better they do one right than none at all. So think carefully here. In the final stage of repair, the chronic stage, you need to aim your goals towards the client's individual needs, which you should do anyway, but look at the elements that they are struggling with and ensure they are addressed thoroughly. This doesn't mean the area that seems okay should be neglected. You will be looking to regain and develop mobility, flexibility, strength, stability and proprioception. Your main overall goal at this stage is to return your client to the pre-injury function. It is important to progress your client onto more demanding activities. If you remember back to your level 3, unit 2, we discussed the need for progression to continually increase strength, etc. The tissues have to be stressed and overloaded to get stronger, more flexible and more mobile. So a stagnant plan will not help your client. You need to ensure through the healing process that they do not pick up secondary injuries and dysfunctions caused by limping or using muscles in a different way. So you really do have to think a lot about this. You can employ all techniques at this stage. All aftercare or home care advice needs to be pitched at the right level for your client and there are varying factors to this. Their age how active they are were before the injury, how engaged they are and so on. 
You may need to start at the simplest level or partway through the possible progressions. This applies to flexibility, mobility, strength and even proprioception work. So some examples of progression might be isolated joint movements, simple multiple joint movements, complex functional activities. If you don't have the appropriate qualifications, this can be outsourced to a fitness professional. But there must be good communication skills between you to ensure an effective and safe treatment plan. We have mentioned before about building networks and this is another good reason why. The qualifications you could add to your sports massage if you wanted to be able to rehab your clients yourself would be something like a fitness instructor, a personal trainer or something along the lines of Pilates. This would give you the ability to be able to give exercises for specific people. Just as a side note here, Less can sometimes be more with a client when it comes to getting them to do stuff on their own. They really aren't very good at it at times. I have dozens of people say to me, I'm seeing a physio and I'm not getting any better. They give me loads of exercises to do and I don't have time or it hurts or I can't remember what they told me. I work on the principle that if I can get them to do one thing right rather than a dozen things not at all, I'm on to a winner. Don't get me wrong, some clients are extremely diligent and will do exactly what you say. Or worse than doing nothing at all, they will do twice as much as you've asked them to do. And this can really be a problem and actually cause things to go backwards because they're just stressing things too much. So when it comes to home care with your client, you're really walking a tightrope and it can be really difficult. You will need to try and gauge your client. Will they do as they're advised or ignore it, do twice as much, or will they do nothing at all? So this was a basic overview of what sort of treatment plan you might be looking together and things to remember and consider. You can now move on to the cryotherapy section.